dear colleagues, first of all, I would like to thank to the organizers of this session and for their kind invitation. Uh, today, I would like to discuss the survey Eskişehir Kütahya Research Project, also known as EKAR, ongoing on the inland Western Anatolian Plateau. This mountainous region between the Aegean coast and central Anatolia is separated from inland Western Anatolia uh, by the Sultan mountain range and their northerly continuation, continuation Murat mountain, the Phrygian highlands and Turkmen mountain. And the Gördes Uşak region begins with steep slopes from Akisar, Alajir plains and gradually rises to the east and the mountainous area east of Denizli form the western borders of inland western Anatolian plateau. This plateau juts into the Marmara region in the north. Uh, the Afyon region forms the eastern part of the plateau. The inland western Anatolian plateau has parallel mountain ranges with altitudes of uh, 1,900 and 2,500 meters running in a southeast northwest direction along the inland western Anatolian plateau. These ranges are separated by undulating depression plains covered by aluminium and split valleys. Emirda, the Phrygian highlands and the Turkmen mountain range border from the east plains of Afyon, Altıntaş, Örencik and Tavşanlı at an altitude of 1,000 meters and 1,500 meters. These were densely settled in prehistoric times. In this map, the uh, settlements in inland western Anatolia dated to the early Bronze Age can be seen. These data is based on survey results of James Mellard and David French, as well as Turan Efes, Kütahya, and Eskişehir Bilecik surveys. Thanks to the excavations so far, uninterrupted chronology from the Neolithic until the end of the Bronze Age has been detected. Unfortunately, excavated settlements such as Demir Hüyük, Külloba and Keçi Çayırı, and rescue excavations such as Çiledir and Kureyşler were not settled in early Bronze Age three, or were un only excavated in a limited area. Of these settlements, Külloba will be discussed first. The site has been under exca excavation since 1969 and gives us a chronological uninterrupted sequence until the second millennium BC. This important site with its administrative building and architectural remains provides us with evidence for social stratification and long distance trade. Since it wasn't settled in second millennium BC, we are unable to see the development in the region. In order to complete this chronological gap, this survey project began in 2017. In this region, large sites dated to the end of the 3rd millennium BC and 2nd millennium BC were intensively surveyed with new technologies. In the context of the project, at least one of these mounds labeled on this map uh, will be intensively surveyed during the upcoming working season. In this way, the most important and very poorly detected EB3 uh, Middle Bronze Age and Late Bronze Age periods of the region will be better understood. Karapazar Mount, Porsuk Mount in 2017, Yakakayı and Tavşanlı Mount in 2018, and Hacikebir Mount in 2019 were intensively surveyed. Of these settlements, the most detailed research was completed on Tavşanlı. The Tavşanlı Mount is situated in a tectonic depression called the Tavşanlı Plain, which drained by means of the Orhaneli Stream. This plain is surrounded by a plateau that is over 200 meters. The mound is possibly situated on a hill which is not very high. The mound itself is located two kilometers north of Tavşanlı town and nearby the Orhaneli Stream. And the mound is already known in Anatolian archaeology and important archaeologists were previously interested in, in it. Uh, James Mellard, Tahsin Özgüç and Turan Efe conducted surveys here and introduced the site. Especially Tahsin Özgüç stressed both the Tavşanlı Plain and Tavşanlı Mound 
as well as its connections with the Inagel Plains. These previous surveys identified the settlement area as 400 meters to 300 meters and 10 meters in height. This is equal to nearly 12 hectares. In this video, the blue area shows the settlement area of the previous surveys and the red line is the distribution area of the site after our research. During our intensive survey, the mound was divided into 50 to 50 squares over 450 to 50, uh, 450 meters area, which surpasses the settlement borders of the previous surveys. Material from this 81 square was collected. Furthermore, after the detection of material outside of this area, the western, southern, eastern and northern areas uh, of these squares were also collected. All of the material dated to the Early Bronze Age, Middle Bronze Age and Late Bronze Age was collected from this area. The southeastern part of the settlement had very few pot shards uh, dating to the Classical periods and only a few shards dating to the Iron Age and Middle Age were collected from the top of the mound. The mound, unlike uh, previous sites that were investigated, is a big settlement according to Western Anatolian criterion. According to the pottery distribution, the mound is 650 to 680 meters size, which is equal to 44 hectares. And at least 18 meters of height has been detected. Furthermore, geoarchaeological research was already completed at Tavşanlıhük. This blue area shows the archaeological protected area and red points show drilled areas of last year's survey. The soundings were completed by Levent Uncu from Bilecik University. Three drill soundings were made along the Orhaneli stream to the eastern part of the mound. They were five, five centimeters in diameter and half open drill points of one meter were nailed and sediment samples were collected from every meter. The, uh, the soundings are three meters deep in TVS1, eight meters deep in TVS2 and seven meters deep in TVS3 from the surface. And the sediment samples from these soundings come from a cultural field. The structure of the soil also indicates that this area is a slough vocationally. Furthermore, the deepest sounding, TVS2, contains burnt charcoal and muscle shell pieces, which provides us with radiocarbon dates. From this, the radiocarbon dates dated to the Neolithic period, which is only previously known at three or four settlements in the Kutahya region and unknown from the Tavshan Mound. Beyond this, all phases of Early Bronze Age were established. Also, char charcoal pieces were sampled from the burnt layer just below the surface in the plowed western slope of the mound in order to get, uh, to get C14 dates. This gives us an information about the beginning levels of the second millennium BC. The results of the survey, C14 dates and late Bronze Age pottery collected in the squares from the top of the mound has helped us create this stratigraphy. Here, due to the data in question, the east-west profile of the mound and north-south sequence, the height can be seen. If we focus on the east-west profile, we can argue that there is a late Neolithic settlement at the bottom of the mound. Even though the soundings didn't reach the main soil, the calibrated radiocarbon dates from the shell gives the range of 6,074 and 5,988 BC. There is also a dark faced bear fragment from these soundings, which indicates a Neolithic cultural layer. Over it, the mound has nearly 10 meters thick of early Bronze Age fill. But against this thick fill, 
there is very few early Bronze Age pottery on the surface. Only 10% of the uh, 11,000 pieces of pottery collected in the survey is dated to early Bronze Age. Uh, there are two thick burnt layers dated to the second period of early Bronze Age, so it is possible that the early Bronze Age pottery could be locked under. Characteristic bowl and jar forms this, of this period can be found in the repertoire, especially the interning rim bowl variations of the black-topped bowls are densely found. The others have simple profile, profiles. So to say that the total area of the early Bronze Age settlement is 21 hectares would not be wrong. The transition to the Middle Bronze Age began in 2200 BC and Middle Bronze Age pottery is distributed nearly all over the mound. And if we didn't have the geoarchaeological soundings and their dating, we could identify the mound as one of the biggest Middle Bronze Age mounds of Western Anatolia. But above the thick fill of the Early Bronze Age, the second millennium level, levels are thinner. At least we can say a second millennium BC settlement uh, distributes to uh, 230 to 300 meter wide area over nearly 8 hectares. When compared to the gigantic sizes of the second millennium BC mounds, this settlement seems to be, to be smaller. However, we can also recall the second millennium BC settlement at Seyit Ömer Höyük, which was recently excavated with impressive finds, is just bigger by half a hectare. A classic characteristic of the transition to the Middle Bronze Age period is a form uh, shown here uh, called the bead rim bowl and flattened rim bowl, which has been detected. Furthermore, sharp carinated versions of the bead rims were also found. Over 80% of the pottery on the top of the flat area of the surface is dated to late Bronze Age. The pottery forms of platter, trefoil jugs, unturning rimmed uh, big pitoy were also founded. Moreover, straight outside contours of the mound can be a sign of a strong fortification system. This possible fortification can be dated to late Bronze Age due to the statistical results. To understand this situation, one week ago, with the support of living studies, geoarchaeological sounding and georadar was completed in a two hectares area. And we hope to uh, have the final results in a very short period of time. The drill soundings was done in yellow colored points, showed an 80 meters deep fill. And as it's seen from the photo on the right, there are many burnt layers. We found new material for C14 dating. After radiocarbon analysis, we can draw the eastern, western, and northern profiles of the mound more accurately. Plus, last week, georadar was completed in the area where most of the late Bronze Age pottery comes from. Uh, we haven't received the complete results uh, yet, but we hope to find the fortification system and maybe the entrance. Uh, due to the results of C14 dates, Georadar research has been done on the western slope, which was dated to Middle Bronze Age, and eastern area, which was dated to the end of the Early Bronze Age. First results signed to a wall of three and a half meters wide in two meters depth. Even if it is very early to talk, a fortification system seems to be possible. This wall follows the contours of the mound and separating the settlement as north and south. So, a citadel can also be possible, furthermore, to understand the small rooms behind this wall or if there is a casemate system, we have to wait results of surrounding areas of the mound. This is our suggestion uh, for the possible plan that we have done just with a simple drawing uh, last night. So why was Tavshan Huyik settled? The Tavshan region is rich in metal resources, especially the Domanich in the north and the Emmet copper mines in the west may have been active 
during the Bronze Age. Furthermore, we have evidence from Mushkoy, which is 24 kilometers east of Tavshanlı, that silver was produced since 2500 BC. During the intensive survey, many pieces of uh, metal slag has been found. When we look at the distribution of uh, 70, 97 pieces of slag, the density is higher on the mound and especially in the southeast of the mound. MSICP analysis has been conducted on slags found at the settlement of Tavshan and settlements in the surrounding region shown on the map. Uh, this analysis found both copper and silver to, pr to be present at Tavshan. We are continuing our research on areas that metal resources are dense as seen on this map with the help of lead isotope analysis over time. We hope to identify the origin of metal or place of metal production at Tavshan. In our survey, 20 small finds were detected at Tavshan. In particular, the presence of spindle whorls and weights are signs of animal husbandry and a textile producing population. Other than Tavshan, the survey team completed an intensive survey at Haji Kebir Mount. The data from the three coined mounds showed that it was intensely settled during the Middle Bronze Age and Late Bronze Age. Our project would like to thank Luvian Studies for their big support over the past two years. We'd also like to thank to Dr. Zangar for his contribution. Also, our go uh, thanks goes to the Ministry of Culture and these universities, as you see. And the ECAR team thanks all of you for listening.